Maybe I should stop telling you guys what album I'm going to be talking about next on 10 years later before I take my inevitable month-long break. I know, I said the next video was going to be on B.O.B.'s Strange Clouds, but this tends to be the case. Sometimes I say I'm going to listen to an album for 10 years later, I listen to it, and I just don't have enough to say about it in a script. And then I save it for the year-end sum-up video. So that happened this time. Sorry about that. But I still have an album from May of 2012 to talk about in this series, and it looks like it may go up before May begins, which is nice because because I want to keep myself ahead of schedule. So, welcome back to 10 Years Later, the series where I talk about albums from the 2010s that were either impactful to me, impactful to music in general, very popular, or just worth revisiting 10 years later for good or bad reasons. And as you can tell from the title, the album that we'll be talking about today is the 2012 Absol Record Control System. California rapper and singer, Top Dog Entertainment's own Absol, one-fourth of Black Hippie. Hopefully you know the guy pretty well by now. This was his second studio album and the quick follow-up to his 2011 debut album, Long Term Mentality. Following that album's release, Absol continued to appear on records from his fellow Black Hippie members, J-Rock, Schoolboy Q, and Kendrick Lamar, notably having an extremely impactful appearance on Kendrick Lamar's Section 80. And he pretty much began promoting this project almost as soon as the last Black Hippie album, Schoolboy Q's Habits and Contradictions, was released. Now, I looked at Soul's debut, Long Term Mentality, last year, and I found the album to be okay. K, but leaving some room for improvement. This is pretty natural for a debut album. It's hard to get it right the first time. And while I felt Soul was a little inconsistent with his hooks and lyrics and could occasionally get outshined by his features, I saw the potential in him as a performer and had a good feeling I'd enjoy his later albums more. Now, despite getting a tiny bit of pushback in the comments for my opinion on that album, one person called me a bug for my opinion, which it still blows my my mind when people get angry over a not really that negative review. I went into this one pretty excited. Beyond what I said earlier about how I expected that he'd improve, I was hearing some people say that this was Absol's best project. Already music to my ears, though I did get a tad nervous when I saw that the album was 17 tracks stretching an hour and 11 minutes, far beefier than Long Term Mentality was. Still, that length was not to this album's detriment because this record is awesome. I can say Absol improved on virtually every flaw I had with his debut. The hooks are more memorable, Soul cleaned up his lyricism and came through with some extremely impactful songwriting, and he manages to bounce off of his features really well here. Instead of getting outshined, he does a great job of matching their energy and style to make a lot of the songs work. The album kicks off hot with the intro solo ho. I'm not usually big on start-stop cadences, but Soul flows seamlessly over the smooth production and switches things up a lot to keep it pretty interesting. Jenna Aiko's presence is also small, but she does a great job on the chorus to round out the song nicely. Then the aptly named track two is a cut with a very celebratory beat where Absol wears his attitude on his sleeve. A few bars feel a bit dated, but I can commend the track because of Soul's ever-changing flow and hard-hitting tone. He sounds hungry here, like he has a point to prove, and I think he sure did prove it. I also got a kick out of that lion like Nala lyric, though that might just be the Disney fan in me. And with Bohemian Grove, as soon as this one started, my first thought was, ooh, this beat is nasty. It's this lighter, groovier instrumental that makes the song feel a lot more laid back. Soul also floats on this one, and there are some very beautiful vocals from the late Alori Joe as well. This is definitely one of the highest of all the high points on the album. It's an amazing song. Terrorist Threats is also another low-key song with a very spacey beat. Absol's performance here embodies a lot of what makes him so good. His flows are constantly changing in unique ways, and he does a great job mirroring his featured artist given that his second verse sounds a lot like Danny Brown, who appears on the song. Danny himself brings his trademark energy to the track, and Jenna Aiko also delivers nice vocals on her bridge. Double Standards, as the title suggests, is a song about the double standards of men and women in relationships. It's another super laid-back cut, but Soul owns this one with some really detailed vivid lyricism and impactful flows. Another extreme high point rounded out by some very nice Anna Wise vocals on the outro and in the background. Lust Demons is a bit more of a conventional song with a pretty bouncy beat. Soul goes with a pretty straightforward but rather fast flow that plays into some of the instrumental's more soulful sounds and vocal samples. BJ the Chicago Kid's appearance is pretty small, but he still sounds amazing and J-Rock goes in on his verse too. And Illuminate features another more spacey, stripped-down beat, and Soul delivers a verse that carries a bit more of an emotional tone to it, but never 
nevertheless carries a lot of braggadocious bars as well. Saul talks about how he belongs right after Eminem on a greatest rappers list, how he could rap circles around Jay-Z, and how he could even surpass Tupac, Biggie, and Nas. Is it bold? You better fucking believe it. But I respect it. That level of confidence is great, and he delivers it with conviction. Kendrick Lamar also appears on the song, and surprise of the century, his verse is incredible. With a confident flow, hard tone, and excellent rhyme scheme, it rounds out the song perfectly. Few and far between, there are cuts that aren't exactly high points, but they aren't extreme lows, and they don't dampen the excitement of the album. Take the track Pineal Gland, for example. I don't think the instrumental is the most memorable on the album, but it does have some cool moments of darkness. And Soul does help carry the song with more of his charismatic and clever flows, even though I think the outro goes on a bit long and gets a tad repetitive. Meanwhile, Mixed Emotions is a brighter song where Soul gets into his feelings when he's intoxicated. It still carries that lighter vibe of some of the other songs, but with a tiny bit more bounce here and there. Soul does a nice job as usual, though I do think there are a few moments where the song just slows a bit too much for me. Moments like the bridge and the hook, for example, just don't grab me quite as much as they could. It's definitely not a bad song, but it doesn't hit me as hard as some of the other ones on the record. Though I do appreciate the small appearance from BJ the Chicago Kid on the outro. Sapa features a more stripped down beat with some darker vocal samples, while Soul slows his flows down a little bit here and there while handing off the mic to Schoolboy Q for a guest verse. They tie back into the album's control system theme by making a track about the Stop Online Piracy Act and its attempts at censorship. Soul does a great job and Schoolboy Q's tone is extremely hard while their combined verse shows great chemistry. My only thing I'm not as crazy about is the chorus. The chopped and screwed vocal tone is cool, but the actual hook itself doesn't do all that much for me. It's still a decent track, just not a personal favorite. Show and Love is a move back into something with a bit more of an old school feel, where Soul slides back into the darker bars and tone of some of the record's earliest moments. There are a few points where it feels a little bit all over the place for me, but there are some cool ideas, from some of the vocal effects on Soul's voice to the dark and rebellious lyrics. Near the back of the album, though, Soul shows us that he's more than just a rapper. He really ups the ante in terms of his artistry with several songs that I think are among his most impactful. A Rebellion, for example, is a major switch up from the rest of the album. There is almost no real rapping on it. It leans more into the soul and R&B vibes, relying on the sung vocals of Ab Soul and Alori Joe. It goes through a pretty repetitive structure, but manages to stay catchy and memorable throughout. Soul and Alori Joe's vocals mix perfectly, and while the song is naturally centered around rebellion, I feel like there's a deeper emotional connection here where the song kind of takes on a whole new meaning. Alori Joe, who was Absol's girlfriend, took her life just a few months before this record's release. Throughout the song, Soul constantly sings about being all alone on this one, which, yes, naturally means being alone in rebellion, but also means he's literally alone after losing the person he loved. It's a heart-clenching change of pace from several other songs on here, and it's a wonderful moment on the project. Empathy is also a move into something a bit smoother with a slower, more sultry instrumental that relies more on Absol's singing. The R&B-driven production is light and extremely lovely, just the kind of thing you feel like you're floating to. Absol's singing and small rap verse do give me some light Drake vibes, but he does a nice job with this one. Javante makes a few small appearances, but does good work, and of course, Alori Joe sounds beautiful too. Nothing Something carries more of the downbeat instrumentation that feels like it's sparkling, but Soul manages to juxtapose it very nicely with some really energetic and dark flows throughout the song, and his personality definitely shines through. He also digs deep with some pretty hard bars, showing a lot of growth from his first record. And while the beat on Beautiful Death has a bit more energy to it, there's a more emotional tone as Absol delivers some really passionate bars about the state of the world back in 2012, where he also dives into his own demons and suicidal thoughts. It's a stunning growth for Soul, and I think he and guest rapper Punch bring out the best in each other all throughout. Add in a nice chorus from the late Ash Riser, also known as Astrobot, and the result is a fantastic deep cut. The Book of Soul was one of the tracks I was most looking forward to hearing initially because I was hearing so many incredible things about it. Little did I know what I was in for. On this five minute track that's built off of a light piano melody, Absol bears everything that he possibly could about his life, his diagnosis with Stevens Johnson syndrome, and of course the impact of Alori Joe's suicide on him. It's the kind of track I feel like it might be nearly impossible to feel no emotion toward. 
honestly the line where Absol said he wanted to jump off a tower to find Alori Joe since she took her life by jumping off a tower nearly broke me. It's one of the darkest, realest bars I've ever heard, and I think this is quite possibly one of the greatest things Soul has ever put out. Top it off with a light vocal appearance from BJ the Chicago Kid, and you've got a career-defining moment in Absol's discography. This could have been the perfect ending to the project, but Absol instead decided to close with the Black Lip Bastard remix, another classic black hippie posse cut with dark pianos that sampled Donny Hathaway's A Song For You. Kendrick, Soul, Schoolboy, and J-Rock are all built for this kind of production, and they come through with some pretty wild bars too. These are just a few examples, but Kendrick saying, even fallen off, I land on the ass of Nicki Minaj really got me when I heard it. And I also like J-Rock's line where he asked, how are you gonna dance with the devil with two left feet? I still kind of feel like the Book of Soul would have been a more impactful closer, but I understand the choice here given that previous Black Hippie projects have ended with posse cuts. Plus, if nothing else, it's still a great track. Overall, while I still have to listen to a few of his albums, I can see why Control System is held in such high esteem among his discography. Soul takes all the things that I felt didn't quite work about long-term mentality and cleans up to make this even greater while still retaining the elements that excited me about that album. The production choices are smart, and beyond being a talented and charismatic rapper, Soul shows off an impressive amount of versatility as a performer here. He proves unafraid to handle different styles and tones and gets a lot of mileage out of a pretty varied collection of instrumentals. The fact that he also plays off of his features much better on this album also showed even more of his growth as a producer. His writing, which I felt was a little all over the place on his first album, stuns on this project, and his hooks, which I felt got sour at points on his debut, are far more impressive here. We always hear about the sophomore slump in almost any form of media, but Absol didn't suffer any kind of slump. I might even say this is one of the more impressive jumps between debut and sophomore album that I personally have heard. I definitely see why it's held in such high regard for Absol. It's a stunning project that grabs you from the jump and rarely lets go. Back in 2012, I doubt I would have been able to enjoy this thing all that much, just because I wasn't really listening to this style of music back at the time. Listening to it now, I think it's a massive improvement over long-term mentality and by far one of the best records I've heard out of Black Hippie. If I had to put it on my scale, it would easily get an excellent rating from me. I had a good feeling when I listened to Long Term Mentality that Absol's later records would be even better, and damn sure this one is. Can't wait to hear the other ones over the next few years. But that's just my opinion on this album. What did you guys think about it? Did you listen to it back in 2012? Do you still listen to it now? Did you love it back then? Hate it back then? Do you still love it now? Do you still hate it now? Are you just completely indifferent toward it? And do you consider this Absol's magnum opus, or is there another album of his that you prefer more? Whatever your thoughts, opinions, and experiences are, leave them down in the comments below. Let's keep this civil and have some fun as we like to do. If you guys want to hit like and subscribe and support some of my other ventures that I have linked in the description, thank you. If not, it's no big deal. I totally understand. And that was the only May 2012 album that I was going to do a proper 10 years later video on, but I have quite a few June records to talk about. The next 10 years later video is actually going to be my 80th episode of 10 years later. And while I could do what I usually do and tell you guys what the next one is gonna be. Maybe I'll just let you guys guess. I think I'll start doing this when I do my inevitable month break from 10 years later to work on the next set of videos. Just so I don't constantly have to say if all goes right and I don't have to constantly worry about if I listen to an album and don't enjoy it enough or don't have enough to say about it to do a full video. I can just leave you guys in suspense. Plus it's also fun to see if you guys can guess what the next album is gonna be. So yeah, I will have a couple June 2012 albums that I wanna talk about for 10 years later, but I will not tell you guys what the 80th episode is going to be. That is for you guys to guess and you guys to try to figure out. So stay tuned for that, but until then, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. Peace.